What's going on guys? So I know I said I wasn't gonna put a video up until the weekend and I really didn't plan on it because I'm pretty busy, but I got off of work right now and it's Friday at 11.56. So I figured I was gonna get off early this morning. Uh, so what I did is I just put a Q&A question on Instagram and I got 30 questions already on Instagram. I remember when I first started the channel, I would put up like pictures say Q&A, ask all your questions, no questions. So like getting 30 questions now, so I'll try to, just got another one, 31. So I'm gonna try to go through as many of these as possible uh, throughout this video, and then I'm gonna overlay some training footage from today's uh, deadlift and squat workout as well. But pre-workout, what I'm doing is I added two scoops of protein, and I'm gonna have some of these Sour Patch gummies, the watermelon flavor, uh, just because I'm going right from work into training. I didn't wanna eat a meal, so protein, powder, digest pretty easy, and then pretty much sugar that just breaks down real fast and gives me energy. So. Hope you guys enjoy this video and this Q&A. Hope I answer a lot of your guys' questions and uh, we'll see what I do in the gym. So as if my truck wasn't dirty enough, now it's covered in sugar. Sugar everywhere from spilling those Sour Patch Kids. But uh, getting to this Q&A while I drink my pre-workout and get that buzz on. So, there were actually a few questions that were asked a few times. Uh, so, I'll get into that one first. And it was, if as a teen you should track your macros or when you should start tracking macros at all. And uh, I'll kind of give it on like a, my personal opinion because in high school and like early college, I didn't track macros at all. Ever. I just kind of ate how I felt. Uh, and I got really good results. Like I remember in college, people would tell me I had like the best back. My arms were huge, and uh, I was like on that forever bulk diet, just eating as much as I could. Didn't track anything. I didn't start tracking macros until I started doing my first show. Um, so like as a teen, I won't even recommend tracking macros. I won't recommend tracking macros to anyone really until like after 20, uh, because I think if you start tracking macros too early, it kind of you get too involved in it and it can, can become really controlling and you kind of like skip social situations. Uh, so in my personal opinion, I think, you know, it's all on a, an individual level, but you shouldn't tracking Mac, start tracking macros before you're ready to start tracking macros. So it doesn't take over your life. Uh, so as a teen, no, I don't think you should be tracking macros. And that kind of, follows into my next question that I want to answer is how I got so lean from a bodybuilding competition because I was lean me and my brother both got real lean and we dieted for 16 weeks started around 210 pounds got down to like 178 at the lowest on stage I was 181 because I carved up so what I did is I found my maintenance calories broke it up into carbs proteins and fats because before this I wasn't tracking anything so I think I started my carbs around 350 protein 250 fat 70 uh, and then I would weigh myself every day and then use the scale plus what I saw in the mirror to determine if I needed to drop macros and I made an overall plan from 16 weeks out to one week out and it was really tentative of where I was going to adjust my macros and I pretty much followed that so I would decrease carbs by about maybe 50 grams every two weeks or something um, and at the lowest my carbs were at 150 fat was at 50 and protein was at 275. Uh, so really the way I did it is I just saw what changes needed to be made. I had a plan set, but I adjusted the plan accordingly uh, to see what kind of progress I was making. So that's what I really recommend to people is make a plan before you go into a diet and then adjust based off the scale and what you see in the mirror. All right, do you believe you're fully recovered from your eating disorder? I personally don't believe in being fully recovered. That is always something that's going to be a part of you. Things won't get easier, you just get stronger. So I completely agree with this to a certain extent uh, that I think I am fully recovered. I know I'm fully recovered, but there is always part of me that will control food. For the rest of my life, food will mean more to me than I think the average person. And uh, I'll think about food differently and look at it differently and look at it based off of the nutrition rather than, oh, that pizza, I'm hungry not like oh pizza that has a lot of fat I should adjust accordingly for the rest of the day uh, so I think I'll always control food a little more than most people 
and I'm a nutrition major too and a bodybuilder and I like powerlifting. So it's kind of what I love to do. Um, but I am fully recovered, I think, mentally from that whole thing. And if I don't want to track today, I don't track. If, uh, if I want to eat something that doesn't fit my macros, I'll eat it. And it doesn't bother me at all. And going into another question, cheat days. So like for cheat days, I don't have cheat days. I have cheat meals. And I don't even like the word cheat meal. I like free meal because I don't binge on this meal. It's just a meal that doesn't fit my macros probably. So I'll track macros probably three out of the four meals that day. Uh, and then say me and my buddies want to go grab pizza or wings or something. I'll just go and eat that. It won't fit my macros probably. And I'm not going to track that meal. But I'm not going to go overboard. So if I'm going for wings, I'll probably get between 12 and 18 wings. I'm not going to get like 100 wings, eat all these appetizers and go crazy because I just don't like to binge. I don't like to, that feeling the next day. And uh, it's just something that doesn't appeal to me. So like ever since starting If It Fits Your Macros or Flexible Dieting, I haven't felt the need to binge or go crazy on a cheat meal because the foods I want to eat all the time and crave, I just fit in. So I don't have crazy cravings uh, when I'm not fitting into my macros. You said you moved around a lot because of the army. Uh, what is your favorite place you've lived so far? To tell you the truth, probably Pennsylvania where I grew up and spent no time in the army. I love Pennsylvania. And the weather today in Texas reminds me of Pennsylvania. Uh, but it's so nice because you hit all four seasons and you hit like the coldest part and you hit the warmest part. You have mountains. Um, it's just great. I love it. I do like Texas so far, but I haven't experienced the summer yet. Georgia was not my favorite, but the place I was in, I was pretty a good location because I was close to Savannah, Georgia, which is beautiful if you've never been there. Pensacola, Florida, Destin, Florida. I was an hour from Atlanta, so there was a lot to do, but I do miss home a lot. Opinion on intermittent fasting. So I think intermittent fasting can be good depending on what your schedule is, but like for me, I'm up from like 4.30 a.m., until midnight pretty much every day so I would not want to do a window of like you know eight or ten hours of just eating because I will be starving the rest of the time um, it works for some people like a lot of college students I think it could work for but uh, just based on your schedule and based off my schedule I would never do intermittent fasting it just has no appeal to me uh, and I really don't see any benefit from it because at the end of the day what matters is your total calories that you consumed and the energy you expended what is the best way to get over being hungry at night if you have finished off your macros for the day? So if you're bulking or maintaining, you finished off your macros and you're still hungry, there's really no reason to go to bed hungry. Uh, I just think you should, if you're still hungry, eat. If you're on a cut and you're dieting for a show, I mean, that's normal, that happens. Um, and the only thing I can say or recommend is try to eat foods towards the end of the night or the rest of the, day, the whole day that are very high in volume uh, and that'll fill you up and aren't very energy dense. So that's what helped me when I was dieting for shows. And you can find a lot of calorie free stuff, low carb, like tofu noodles, pickles are calorie free. So a lot of things that'll fill you up uh, that won't necessarily take up a lot of your calories and macros. Have you ever been to Europe? You want to visit one day and what's your biggest motivation? I've never been to Europe. I would love to go. I've always wanted to. My biggest motivation at this point in my life is you guys to tell you the truth. So like uploading videos, getting a response, you guys telling me I'm a huge inspiration and motivation, that inspires me and motivates me more than anything else. Uh, watching YouTube videos of professional bodybuilders lift weights with music in the background does nothing for me anymore. Um, and there's very few things externally that motivate me anymore. It's more internally now and I really motivate myself um, and you guys. So. The things that have motivated me, bleh, motivated me uh, throughout the years have changed dramatically. Um, and it, right now it's just, you know, this channel and talking to you guys. Favorite food for each macro nutrient. And do you have any check friends? I do not have any check friends. Uh, do you want to be my friend? Uh, favorite food for each macro nutrient. Let's see. Fat, peanut butter, obviously. Uh, protein, chicken thighs. Love chicken thighs. Carb, that's a tough one. That is a very tough one. Um, maybe oatmeal. And that's weird. I know it's weird, but that goes into my other question I want to answer. My favorite pre-workout food, overnight oats. Literally have been my favorite food 
since freshman year of college. I've had them pre-workout for probably 80% of my workouts. Uh, so like I mix oats, protein powder, fat-free, sugar-free jello mix or pudding mix, almond milk, mix it together, throw it in the fridge. Sometimes I'll throw in peanut butter and chocolate chips and the next morning it's good. And uh, that's pretty much my pre-workout meal or my breakfast every morning and has been my favorite food forever. My favorite compound lift and donut. Right now, favorite compound lift is deadlifts. Favorite donut, I keep it pretty simple. Glazed, chocolate icing, and sprinkles. Uh, that's just me though. All right, this next one is in regards to carbs. So how do you feel about keto uh, is the first part. And someone asked about uh, using carbs pre-workout um, or just using like protein and fats. So for carbs, I like having carbs pre-workout. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I get enough carbs in the day that I could train fast if I really wanted to. And sometimes I do just based on convenience. But we've seen from studies like uh, Lane Norton references a lot that whether you train fasted or non-fasted and whether you're doing weight training or cardio, it really doesn't have any difference in results. Um, it's just, I think, on an individual level. And I like having carbs in my system training. Keto, I don't know why people do keto. Like, I've talked about this before. Um, you do need carbs and your body can use carbs better than it can use uh protein and fats for energy sources overall your total calories in and out each day are going to determine your weight loss weight gain um so i'm not a huge fan of the keto diet or like paleo uh, just because paleo doesn't include a lot of carbs either other than like uh vegetables so i think there's a lot of information out there online right now and being published in magazines and on tv that kind of gives the wrong impression about carbs um, and nutrition in general. Do you recommend athletes keep the same macros every day or should, should they be varied depending on the training sessions? Uh, so I think a lot of people overcomplicate things and I like keeping a lot of variables the same so that I can really just focus on training itself and hitting my macros. So whether I have an on day or an off day, whether I'm training heavy or light that day, my macros stay the same seven days a week. Uh, if I have a cheat meal or a free meal, the next day I don't change macros at all. I get back on track and uh, kind of just act like it never happened. So putting these two together, how do you get over being so OCD about tracking macros and not eating out at restaurants uh, because you want to be on point? So I'm going to relate ranger school to this. Before ranger school, I used to track macros on point every day. I would avoid social situations and go out to eat because I wanted to hit macros. I got to ranger school and I, they starved me and I told myself I, uh, I wasn't going to do that anymore because for one, I realized I was putting friends and family second to nutrition and this whole bodybuilding thing, which is completely wrong in my opinion. Um, you'll have family and friends forever. This training and nutrition, this should just enhance your lifestyle. Friends and family are part of your life. That is your life. Uh, so it's really hard to accept this and uh, kind of just be like, you know, my friends and family want to go out to eat. I'm going to go out to eat and eat whatever I want. I'm not going to go crazy, uh, but I think you need to find that balance where you can let yourself enjoy time away from this whole nutrition thing and tracking macros. But you find a balance where you can get on point the next day um, and not worry about skipping a day or something like that. And that has really, you know, helped me out after ranger school and I realized my priorities probably weren't right before going to ranger school uh, so they're kind of set now and I'm just so much happier the way I'm doing things now so if I want to go out to eat with friends and family I will I'll eat whatever I want next day just get back on track and keep doing what you were doing do you do any isolation exercises for your abs right now I don't do any abs because it's like the off season um, but when I'm dieting for a show or something only thing I do for abs are cable crunches and hanging leg raises. And uh, my abs and obliques were crazy for my show. So, uh, like they say, abs are made in the kitchen. Do machines give constant tension like cables? Uh, the only really thing I use, I use, I do a lot of compound exercises like you guys see. A lot of dumbbell, barbell work. But I also like using cable stuff. Uh, flies, I'll do like lat pull down with cable, stuff like that. I think you can get benefit from both, but I always do my compound movements first, first thing of the workout, and after that, then I'll go into some isolation stuff and accessory stuff. So I think 
accessory stuff and isolation work does have a good uh, benefit to your workout, but I always think it should be placed after the compound movements because compound movements are where you're seeing your progress. You're seeing the weight go up. Isolation stuff, I see it as like the fine tuning. Are you going to expand BPN? Uh, what are my goals in the next five years for the company? So the next five years, I'll probably be out of the army by then. Um, and right now we're not gonna expand any products just because we're building organically within the company. So I'm not gonna be taking out any more loans, any investments. Um, we're gonna build up to a point where I'm comfortable ex to expanding and I know that our brand awareness and customer base is big enough that when we do introduce new products, they're just gonna sell out. Uh, so that's like where I see BPN going. There's definitely uh, growth. We're definitely growing every day and I love it. And the feedback I'm getting from you guys, from the products and the samples I send out is just amazing. Um, but it's hard to really focus on BPN because I'm in the army right now. So my plan after the army is have BPN set up where I can just jump right into it and that's my full-time job. So I'm gonna wrap up this video. It got a little longer than I expected. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I was able to answer your questions. I know I wasn't able to touch on all of them because there were a lot and I will save them for other videos. So you guys take it easy and I will be posting a video in a couple days here.